Okay, last time we mentioned in Rabbi Tatz that according to the Orachim and according to the Zohar that speaks about Yosef and his brothers, it's very clear that a, a human being's free will could affect the outcome of a situation. That if Yosef's brothers would have killed him, they could have killed him. Even though that we see from the end of the story that Yosef was not deserving of the death penalty because when they threw him into the pit, the snakes and the scorpions did not eat him, did not bite him, and he was whisked out and sold as a slave down to Egypt, and the whole story unfolds, he ends up becoming the second in command to Paro. So it was destined for Yosef to become the leader amongst the, the nation, against, of, of the world, and to become a leader amongst his brothers. That was destined. But we see that the fact that the brothers wanted to kill him, had Ruve not come along and saved him, he would have been killed. And that would have been a terrible thing. But you see, says the Orachayim, and that's the way the Zohar is describing it as well, is that it's quite frightening to see the power that Hashem has given over to human beings, that we have Bechir, we have free will, we could, we could do things that was not even decreed in the heavens, should happen. Now that's all on the, the negative. A person could be a perpetrator, they could be a, they could be a dangerous person, they could be a thief, they could be a, a violent person, they could come and they could cause damage to a person. But at the same time, if we're going to believe in the power of free will can be used negatively, then we have to believe that it can be used positively as well. And therefore he says that the power of human choice, of free will, Bechira, extends to the benefits also. It might be assumed that any benefit one bestows on another must have already been coming his way. Now we could look at the world the way that we think naturally. That Hashem is the one that's running the world completely, and therefore everything that happens in my life is all decreed by Hashem. So if in fact it was decreed that I should be getting a, a, a surplus of money, I'm a poor person and I need, to get a, I need to get charity. So it was already determined that I should be getting a thousand dollars check of charity. So the fact that this guy comes along, Reuven Yankel over here, gives me a check of a thousand dollars, thank you very much, I appreciate it, but you're just like a puppet for God. Meaning you're just the, you're just the pipeline of tzedakah that HaKadosh Baruch wanted to bring to the world. So is your Bechira so great that you're the one who wrote the check? You're just doing anyway what God's, going to, what God's going to do for me. I can find the money on the ground, I can get the money out of your checkbook. Either way, the, the money's going to come to me. Hashem already decreed that. So if you do something that's good for me, am I really benefiting from your Bechira? I'm going to get it anyway. And if it's not going to be you, somebody else is going to come along. So what exactly are you doing? Says Rav Tatz, that this would be one way of looking at man's actions. That when a person does something good for somebody else, I don't really have to say, wow, what an amazing person. He did such a nice thing. Anyway, Hashem is creating everything. And He's deciding what I'm going to get. And if Hashem wants me to have good in my life, it's because if there's good in my life, it's because God decreed that there's going to be good in my life. So what is this person actually? Hashem gets the mitzvah. Hashem gets the mitzvah. Oh, okay. So you're, now you're asking a, a very good question. So then why is the Torah filled with mitzvahs that we understand for every mitzvah that a person does, they're going to get rewarded. If really Hashem already decided that this person, let's just say in the world of chesed, okay? If Hashem already decided that this person is going to get this amount of chesed done in his life, this amount of tzedakah, this amount of help, so on and so forth, so why should I get rewarded for the tzedakah that I give, for the chesed that I did for him, for the beaker, for the, I'm a doctor and I, and I bring him the, I bring, I bring the refu, I bring the medicine that's going to help save his life. So, uh, Hashem's saving his life, what, what am I doing? So, that's a good question. And that's really going to be the, the crux of what we speak about over here. So, and therefore, it means like this, that according to what we've learned, however, one may become another's benefactor in a far more powerful way. A giver can generate a benefit to a recipient who may not have received it without the giver's choice to give. The guy is living on, uh, on uh, he's living in, living in the slums. He's got no money to his name. His kids are starving. He himself doesn't have a job. He's miserable. His wife is screaming and yelling at him every single night, go get a job, go get a job, do something. 
And one day, whatever, my car takes a wrong turn, and I end up on, in the slums, and I see this poor guy walking down the street, and he looks so sad, and my heart breaks for him. And I roll down the window and I said, is everything okay? He says, no. I said, what's the matter? He said, I lost my job five years ago. I can't find a new job. My kids are starving. My wife is driving me crazy. I can't pay the rent. We're about to get evicted. And my heart is breaking. I said, wow, I feel so bad for you. How much money is your rent? He says, I'm, I owe 2000 a month. I'm backlogged already six months. I owe the, ten, I owe the landlord $12,000 right now. I pull out my checkbook, I write a check, $12,000. The guy looks at me, his face smiles, he can't stop thanking me. I said, don't thank me, thank Hashem. Hashem's sending you the money, sending it through me. He says, I've had, no. This guy's down and out, this guy's miserable, this guy has no money, this guy needs tzedakah. And you happen to drive by, and your heart bleeds for him and aches for him, and you give him the check. Guess what? Hashem wasn't planning on giving him a check that day. You, with your bechira, with your free will, with your midah, your trait of mercy and compassion you had on him, you gave him the money. And therefore, that's why if you give the tzedakah, you deserve the mitzvah, you deserve the points, you deserve the reward. Because you utilized your bechir, your free will to do something that might not have been decreed in the heaven to happen. And therefore you are the one who gets, who, you are the one who is accredited the mitzvah. Could you say that God caused him to get lost? Yeah. What? Could you say God caused him to Yeah, get lost? you could. Of course you could. So he knew what was the but there's many people that have gotten lost in the slums. Know, and there are many people that saw people. Okay, I, I, again, I'm just, I'm just making a case. I'm just making up a, a story over here. But, but the bottom line is, is that everybody drives, and, and everybody is driving the freeway these days. And everybody gets off at the end of the freeway. And everybody pretends that they don't see that family of four people sitting on the edge of the freeway, starving with a sign that says, please help us, anything else. Everybody's standing there in their car pretending they don't see. Don't we all? We're just pretending. Hope they're not looking at me. Oh no, they saw me. I made. A, no, 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 I'm not looking, I'm not looking. Everybody pretending. One person rolls down the window and says, Oh, I feel so sorry, here's five dollars. And the, you just made these people's day. So, isn't Hashem sending everybody down the freeway? Isn't everybody passing this family? Doesn't everybody see the sign, the little kid in the mother's arms, the mother's like bouncing a baby. That we're living on the streets. And everybody's sitting in their car, air conditioning blowing into their face, talking to their friends. Everything's great. I was in the show the other day. I just happened to go to that show. Yes. And there was somebody there that was raising money for the school. Okay. And I don't usually go to that school and they write a show and everything. And I write a check. Great. It's the same thing. It's, it's around to the same thing. Actually, no, okay, again, 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 again you're right. Again, you, again, you could say, well, if Hashem didn't want that I should write a check to this place over here, He wouldn't put me in this place at that time. You, you, again, you're right. You are right. And that's really what we're going to have to see over here. There's two parts of the equation that are always working. There is HaKadosh Baruch Hu's will, and the way, that he's, the way that he is driving the world and running the world and designing all of the plans of man, that's one thing. But there's also your world of Bechira, of free will. And therefore, our Kodesh Baruch can put you in the right place at the right time, but you can be on your phone and not see what's going on. You could be numb that day, you had a bad day, and you're just not in the mood to do chesed. So you, the guy's coming and, please, please... Uh, I'm marrying off my 20th child and I'm already in debt. I have no money. My wife has been sick in a coma for the last six years. And you're like, okay, buddy. And you run out. Hashem gave you a chance to do tzedaka. What do you mean? It means that we have Hashem sets up the scenario, but we also have to respond. And he's saying over here, and it could very well be in certain cases that even though 
that Hashem did not decide that this person should have the money or the chesed done with him, you could manipulate, so to speak, the world by using your bechir, your free will, for making it for the right things. Yes? You know, I think by saying you drive by and most of us don't do anything, and you're right, but what if it turns out that you gave the guy tzedakah and then you find out he overdosed to that? Right. See, in, in the, you know, I have to tell you, I was, so, I was so disgusted the other day. I was driving on the street, and there was a guy standing at a light. And he was with one of the signs that he wants, he wants money. And the guy looks like he's whacked out on drugs. And he says, won't lie, want to get high. <laughs> I, saw uh, <laughs> I saw that too. So, what, so now you tell yourself, wow, you know, at least he's. Uh, so you tell. So some people say, well, at least he's honest. Yeah. Okay, here you go. But those of us that have any, you know, morals will say, I'm not giving you money to go. Okay, so then, 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 in these cases, in these cases, first of all, you're right. A lot of these people are not legitimate, or they are legitimate, but they're going to use the money for bad things. If you decide you want to give something. Just give a little bit. Don't give the guy a lot. Just give the guy 50 cents. Give the guy a, do a dollar maximum. There's not much he can do with a dollar. He'll go buy, if he needs, if he's really hungry, he'll buy himself a drink. He'll go to McDonald's and buy himself a, a, a bag of fries or a hamburger for 99 cents. But he's not going to go buy meth and he's not going to go buy drugs. And he's accumulating. Okay, if he's accumulating, in a chinami, fine. Anyway, it, it's, just an, it's just an example. And the point is, is that just because you end up in a situation that God orchestrates in order to benefit somebody else, it doesn't mean that you're, going to, that you're going to do the right thing. So he says, free will has a very real consequences in the world. It may generate changes that would not have happened without its actions. You could change a person's life even though the Nagodesh Baruch Hu didn't decree that you should change the person's life. But he walked the horse to the water. He gave you a chance. And you have a chance now to help this person. Perhaps if we don't help that person, we're going to be held accountable. The divine decrees are not only causative agency, are not the only causative agency in the world. Human free will may be that too. And that's, the, that's really where we're getting to in this whole discussion over here, where there's these two things that are working all the time. There's divine will, which Hashem is, is moving the levers behind the scenes to make things happen. But there's my response to the situation that I find myself in. What am I going to do to bring this thing to fruition? Okay, we'll continue next time. Thank you. You're welcome.